session right now, you guys. Start clapping for a warm welcome, Michael Fussler! Oh, how are you guys? Everyone's having a good time. I'm trying to have a good time, but it's rough. <laughs> I saw this movie earlier, it pissed me off. It's called The Black Little Mermaid. <laughs> Where has my country gone? <laughs> Can't believe they called him. Alright, that's all I have for my joke, don't worry. It's gonna be relevant for like five more hours, so that's about all I put into it. You guys tell that I smoke weed? <laughs> yeah, just by looking at me. Isn't it weird, the more you smoke weed, the more you just start looking like it? <laughs> Didn't try, it just happened. <clears throat> it's not like that with other things, they eat yogurt all the time. None of you guys can tell. When I walked up here, no one was like, oh, that's a Chobani man right there. Like, <laughs> oh. It's crazy that weed's legal here now. I buy weed, I did it today. I bought it on my phone and went and picked it up through a drive through It's insane. 16 year old Mike would have said I'm lying. 16 year old Mike had to go to a Walmart parking lot. You'd hand a stranger $60, and then he'd be like, I'll be right back, and then you just hope that he had Christ in his heart. That's it. That's <laughs> about all you could do. Oh. I feel like I missed out on summer camp. It's a weird thing. It just occurred to me this week. I know. <laughs> it's a strange thing. He gets it. But I do. I really do. My friend was telling the summer camp story, and I was like, fuck, this sounds so fun. Bow and arrows, and swimming, and I don't know what they do, they got patches or something. It just seems fun. I'm too old to bust into summer camp now. I'm too old to have anything to do with summer camp. 33 is too old. I feel like in what, summer camp, if you're a kid, you're like 10, the counselors are 16, the managers are like 20. If you're 33, you should own the franchise. Okay? Can't just start at owner either. You gotta go through your whole life. I can't go around telling people I want to start my own summer camp. Not when you look like this. No. Can't go into a bank and be, tell them I want a loan for my own summer camp. No. They'll put me on a list for that, for sure. The bank manager will look me in the eye and be like, you know I'm putting you on the list for this, right? Well, that's roughly the last, what the last bank said. Sorry to waste your time, but I'm not letting some sexual predator list keep me from achieving my dreams. That last line, you probably sound pretty crazy out of context. <laughs> if, you're, if you're waiting for the bus and you overheard someone say, I'm not letting some sexual predator list keep me from achieving my dreams, you'd be like, I guess I'm walking. <laughs> I, um, I saw this thing on, online, it was like an album of pictures, and it was a ton of them. It was like criminals mugshots, they had all been executed, they were like the death penalty. And it said uh, their last meal and their last words. And I'm just like scrolling through a bunch of them, not caring, because they're all kind of the same. Some of them were kind of scary, but most of them were just like, oh, I hope my family forgives me. Some of them were kind of scary. Like, one was this guy who was like, I don't regret it. <laughs> I was like, I'm glad we killed that one. I think that <laughs> I think he deserved it. I think he was guilty. <laughs> and then there's one that really stuck with me. It was the guy's last meal was listed as spaghettios. Just a string. Yeah, I like spaghettios. Oh, yeah. But here's where it gets. Here, but this, it was listed as spaghettios. But then his last words were, "I asked for spaghettios and they gave me regular spaghetti." <laughs> That's fucked up. They hit him with the we got spaghettios at home thing. Look at that for his last meal. And I also like that he was mad enough about it. He's like, no, they're gonna this is they're gonna know. This is my last words. <laughs> Nothing in my life is more important than this. <laughs> I uh, stopped drinking recently. It's been almost three months since I stopped drinking. Clap your hands for that. Yeah, so if you don't clap, I'll start drinking again. It'll be your fault. I actually had to go to rehab. Ah, very scary. You can probably tell by the way I'm dressed. It's the spring-summer collection from Turning Point. 
Dog rehab is going to be scary. It's really not like anything else. It's, I, honestly, it's just like an adult daycare. <laughs> It's just a bunch of, yeah, there's basketball. We play basketball. I saw a guy play basketball in slippers. <laughs> it's just, it, there's a lot of coloring. Uh, people are super excited about snack time. I saw like an old man with a big, bulbous, alcoholic nose. Asked the lady, he's like, what's for, what's for lunch? And she goes, chicken patties. He's like, oh, fuck yeah. Yes. <laughs> Made this whole day. <laughs> But there's only one TV in rehab, and everybody shares it. I didn't really like mess around with the TV. Just I'm not gonna argue over it. Like, it was like, oh, I want to watch Paul Blart. I think they watch Paul Blart twice in a week. But I'm a big fan of pro wrestling, and on Fridays they play pro wrestling. And I wanted to watch it at 8 p.m. I want to watch it. And I'm like, I'm gonna put my foot down. I've never asked to watch anything. We're watching wrestling for two hours, and uh, people are coming in and out there. I was like, oh, I don't really want to watch wrestling. Like, ah, whatever. And finally, this one guy comes in. He's super psyched that I'm watching wrestling. And this guy was most known for earlier that day, he had shit his pants and refused to change them. <laughs> and not only was he glad that I was watching wrestling, he was a big fan. And we agreed on a lot of the stuff. <laughs> We're just sitting there, and I'm just like, you are the ghost of Christmas future. If I don't stop, I'm going to be you. Just sitting there being like, oh, this guy's one of my favorite wrestlers. Like, yeah, shut up, dude. I don't want to agree with you anymore. <laughs> Been watching a lot of intervention. That's my group therapy. I don't go to group therapy. I just go to watch intervention and be like, oh, at least it's not that bad. At least nobody wants to film me. <laughs> Intervention's kind of an old show now. That was, it was in 2005. That was the golden era of television. It's back when they would just film someone at the worst point in their life. There's a lot of shows like that. Elaine was talking about it. My 600 Pound Life was like that. Horrors is like that. The intervention. I think Bum Fights was on AE for a second. <laughs> My favorite part of every intervention episode is the, the part where they talk about when they were a kid. It always plays like soft piano music. They try to like come up with like nice things about the person that happened before <clears throat> drugs and alcohol. And the people that I feel the worst for, sometimes it'll just be a picture of a baby that they show over and over again. They'll be like, at one point he was a baby, I guess, huh? A baby that didn't smoke meth. That's all we got for this one. But in the later seasons, they do like a twist. I don't know if you guys have seen the, the twist that they do. In like season 12, the formula gets starts to get a little stale. So they do like an intervention inside of an intervention. You don't see it coming. Like the whole episode will be about like one girl and then right before they're about to do the intervention, they'll be like ready to get to her family and stuff. They'll point to the mom. They'll be like, we know you drink too much too. You got to go to rehab too. And she's like, whoa, what? Whoa. <laughs> when you put an alcoholic on the spot, they make up like, really stupid excuses. It's very funny to watch. Like she, she's doing this thing. She was like, no, 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 no. You don't get it. I don't drink like her. I don't, I, I don't drink like her. I don't drink in the morning and I don't drink downstairs. <laughs> So they had wine bottles hidden in the wall, but as long as they're upstairs, I guess it's fine. Uh, I don't know, I feel like I should get out of here. What, it's, it's about time. Now I got time for one more, so I keep looking, I got a sense of time. Oh, did I do the little mermaid joke? <laughs> I feel like it'd be going better if I did that. Let's do it again. <laughs> I told you guys, I only got five more hours, I'm getting it in. Tonight's the last night. <laughs> I, I feel like doing comedy is going to my head a little bit. I'm, not, I'm certainly not a famous comedian, you probably already noticed that by now. But I've got an ego about being a stand-up, for sure. Because like a guy at the bar I saw, he was like, you look so familiar, I think I know you from somewhere. And I was like, yeah man, stand-up comic, you probably saw me down at Laugh Fest or something, maybe down at the comedy club. He was like, mm, no, I think I see you waiting for the bus all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, my name is Michael Bussler. Thank you for coming out. <laughs> <laughs>